Today's guest is Martha Malk. Recently, had been featured in Yahoo Finance as the top 1% of confidence and business coach in Australia. An international motivated speaker, multiple business owner, entrepreneur, multi-award winning international makeup artist and hairstylist and author. Her specialty is empowering new coaches to run their profitable coaching business. Please give a warm welcome to ever blessed Martha Mock. Good morning, Jessmine. Oh, yes. How are you? Good morning. I keep forgetting it's morning for you. You have such a touching, the similar background as I do in regards to the um, abuse of marriage and being bullied in school. And you are a super confidence coach. Tell me what that entails. I think that it is because from I'm a woman that who have been in silence for over 30 years. I have a very colorful past. I've been in abusive marriage, been bullied at school at a very young age. And the hardest thing for me to admit was being sexually molested by someone I trust. All of that experience have brought it up inside of me. And I've always been trying to find a way to break free from it. So I did in the career sense that I was very confident in what I'm doing. I enjoy what I do. I used to be a multi-award winning international makeup artist. I loved that journey. It was absolutely amazing. And then when COVID hit, everything stopped. And I'm like, mm, what am I going to do with my life? That's when my current partner encouraged me to go into the coaching area. And I just love it ever since. And the name Super Confident Coach was actually introduced by him because he's, I told him that I wanted to be a confident coach or success coach because I believe in women. Uh, we are strong. We are tough. And doesn't despite what colorful background that we have, we can be confident and we don't have to be perfect to do it. And he said that, why don't you call yourself a super confident coach? I'm like, oh, really? Like, you know, trying to get myself, get to the feeling. And I did, and I have to admit, it did took me about three months to own that name that I have. And now I'm able to help women in the area of their life, in self-worth, in relationship, and in their career. So I love the title of being super confident coach. That is wonderful. I love how your friend helped you out. Like we got to find a perfect, like the niche that it explains exactly who Martha Mock is. And I guess he, he put it in well, perfectly identifying that you are to him as well as to everyone, a super confident coach. I love that, that little story that you have provided to the listeners. Thank you so much. Now, so Thank what you. is, <laughs> so what is, uh, what inspired you to venture into this career path besides giving you that boost from your friend and helping you along the way on identifying who you are? What inspired you to venture into this career? As a makeup artist, the woman who sit in front of me are the most insecure state that you can imagine. Everyone sitting in front of me will say that my eyes is too small. My face is too big. I don't like this part of me. I don't like that part of me. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart to hear that every single time. And I always tell them, you're beautiful just the way you are. And when I would venture into the coaching world, I say, hey, you know what? I've been making women beautiful on the outside for over 16 years. Why not? I help them from the inside so they can feel amazing every single day. And that's how I find that my job is so rewarding. I don't just help women to feel good on the outside, but I help them from the inside so they do realize how beautiful and good enough they are. Mm -hmm. I have always had a hard time putting that on me because I, it's, it's like another mask that I'm putting on my over my other mask, the way that I have to cover my emotions and, you know, not show the world how hurt I am, how angry I am towards society, how they treat women and try to kind of like, it hurts. We're all human. Even though you try to put on these masks and you go home and you take it off and it's like, it still hurts you only showing your emotions in your pillow, crying it out every night. Like, what is wrong with me? Why is everybody look at me this way? Why do people perceive me as 
not going to accomplish anything in my life because of a statistic being a minority, being a person of color, a woman of color, which puts a lot of burden on you. And um, so for the thought of you having that as your inspiration, I really commend you that you've moved forward and actually use it as a constructive thing. Looking at, at women, you know, not only are they putting on that the makeup for the appearance to feel beautiful. But like you said, the inside is where it counts. It's that's where it should be. We should feel beautiful from the inside out. And I love the analogy that you provided for your path and your, um, the reason for your career. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Because for me, I feel like that makeup is just a tool. Mm -hmm. A makeup is there to help us feel better. It makes us feel like something different because as a human, one of our needs is that excitement and uncertainty. Hey, what am I going to do with myself today to make myself feel a certain way? Mm -hmm. And that's what makeup is about. It's not something that, uh, which a lot of women does use, I totally agree with you, as a mask. They don't want other people to see them. They don't want other people to uh, feel what they're truly feeling. For me, I was the greatest pretender. I was the one that was pretending that everything was fine. Mm -hmm. Everything was okay. I was on stage talking to thousands of women that make up how amazing it is and how it can uh, encourage you. And I remember at that time, I bought a really huge glasses. And the reason for that is I wanted to hide under that. I wanted to uh, share a way that I am okay. And that was my second mask that I have on, my glasses. And that was on top of my makeup. Mm -hmm. So I have two layers of protection around me. And now I have shifted my mindset. Makeup is just there to make me feel good. Just like me putting on a nice dress on a sunny day that I want to go outside to see the sun, to play with the wave. That's what I wanted to make it feel. So everything around us, they have a lovely side and they have something that you may not associate with lovely. So it's all in our mindset of how we see a certain things. So we can actually see everything on a good side. And it's um, so true. So true. With our, uh, I was just reading the news the other day that we're talking about how Facebook and Instagram realize what they're doing to the society, what they're doing to young women by showing all these perfect photos that are completely heavily touched up. They're not them anymore. Mm -hmm. So for me, I can see why, because we always want to be someone else instead of realizing that, hey, we are already good on the inside. We get asked, is that, hey, who is your inspiration? Oh, uh, Kim K or, or any of the famous stars out, like, look at how beautiful they are. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they're eating. Look, look at what they're dressing. They wanted to be a fake person because that was what they think society wants. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy that, um, also during COVID, because a lot of us are not allowed to go out. There was a lot of lockdown and people are starting to go back more real. And there was a statistic showing that a lot of the fake, uh, Instagram their followers have dropped dramatically Mm -hmm. and people are more going towards people who are natural, who are happy to show off themselves. And I'm so grateful for this chain because I'm definitely one of them. I'm not (laughs) a size six model. I'm Asian in a Western world. I'm just me. And I was asked recently, what do I believe in now? I said that my belief is that I belong to me. Mm -hmm. My sense of belonging belong to me because I'm already good just the way I am. Yes, I'm imperfect. Yes, there's plenty of things that I can improve on. But despite that, I don't need to hold myself accountable every single day because I know I'm being a good person. I know that I'm doing the best that I can. Then I stop putting pressure on me of feeling perfect been what society accept every single day hey it's tiring it's so tiring to always be in a victim mode always blaming about what the societies or what the other people are doing and things like that 
stay in your lane because what is happening is outside world is not going to affect you if you don't allow it to affect you. Mm -hmm. There's so many things in the outside world that we shouldn't take in the information because it was just it was just going to overload our system. In our brain, we can only accept 134 bit per seconds of data into our brain, where every single second on the outside world, there's about two millions data trying to get into our filter system. Mm -hmm. So it is us that we have to be very conscious about what we are taking, how do we analyze it, and how do we process the information that is going into our brain. Otherwise, we can get overload, uh, overconsumed, distracted, and nothing will get done. Wow, I didn't know anything about that. That's good information to know that. That's amazing. That's good information. Thank you. Yeah, that's from NLP model of communication. I'm an oh. NLP master as well. And it is something that which is new logistic programming. Mm -hmm. It is something that to help us to understand our thoughts, understand our behavior and help us to choose a better path for ourselves. I highly recommend anyone to go and explore and understand themselves a little bit better because we're all complex creature. Humans, that's what we are. But to understand it, it gives us a greater advantage of taking control back within us. There was one stage that I was going for grief. I lost my cat for 16 years and she is the only thing that I have during that period. I was going for a difficult uh, marriage during that time. And without her, I don't know how I did survive. And when she passed away, I was going into a depression for about three months. Mm. I was going for grief. And what makes it worse was that my ex-husband that I had not talked to for about two, three years, he actually sent me a text and blamed me for her death. And that triggered mm. so many emotions. And I lost control. I was living like a zombie for three months. Yes, I could work, but don't ask me anything about emotion because I will just cry like a baby. Mm. Not until the day that I went into my um, second NLP training, it showed me a way that I was able to find myself again. It made me realize that what happened in the past is a history. And it is something that I cannot control, no matter how hard I try, how much energy I give it. There's nothing I can do about the history or my past. And I can't fix the future because the future hasn't happened yet. So I could only try my best to control and do my best in my very current moment. And that sentence alone wake me up. Immediately, I sent a text message to my partner and I say, I got myself back. I find my control again. I can't control the past. I can't control the future. But what I can control is what I'm thinking in this very current moment. I am taking control back. I'm not going to give power to the person and the things that hurt me. And when I don't give that power to him or to the grief, that power is lessened. So I took control back from the things that hurt me the most. I'm more powerful than the things that hurt me. And that sentence completely got me out from the three months of grief. And I'm finally, every single day, it's a three millimeter shift that you shift to be a better person, you shift to feel better. And just by taking that action, it will help you eventually at the end. Yes, some days is tougher than others. Some days that you may feel that you make six millimeter shift and that's great. Go and celebrate it. Celebrate every single step you make so you don't look at every single step as a trauma. Mm -hmm. You look at every single step as an achievement. And it will make you much more motivated to achieve the goal that you wanted to achieve. Thank you so much. Can you tell me the three best things about you? Three best things about me. I know um, there's probably I'm definitely caring. more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm caring, but not controlling. I realize the difference between care and control. Uh, I'm also have a very lovely smile. Mm -hmm. And I award myself for that because... Smile can break down any barriers. If you don't know something, just smile. If you need meet someone <laughs> new, just smile. Yeah. And it will help to break the barriers around you. And the last thing that I would say it was good about me is I'm confident and I'm not insecure. 
that is one of the things that when I met my current partner, he said to me, you're very different. You are very confident and you're not insecure. Because I realized insecurity is not attractive. What attracts is actually confidence. Mm -hmm. That's very true. I've noticed that because when I speak to other people who confront me, like one of the, the things they always say, like, oh, I love your smile. And it's like, thank you. But there's like maybe two other things out of that three best things that I like about me smile is one but the other two I'm still working on <laughs> but it's like um insecurity is a very it's a very hard thing especially when it's already been embedded in your mind that you are uh you do not sum up to anything you will not become anything so insecurity is a was a very sh- a hard struggle for me I'm getting there with my partner and um and I'm so happy that they were able to tell me that they could see me budding and be more uh, confident. And um, it took forever just to get to that point where someone actually acknowledged like, you know what, you are blooming, you know, you are maturing, you're becoming who you really are. And I'm in my 40s. And it took me all this time to finally have someone say that to me and really mean it and um, really care about, you know, who I am. So the people in your lives that help you get out of that, take a a double take and self-reflect of your challenges. And when you have someone who actually just like, you got this girl, you are strong. You just do not know how much potential you have. You don't know how you are just the beautiful, vibrant person. I didn't get that kind of thing. And now it's like, I want more of it. <laughs> you know, I've been wanting to I have that. You. So, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Definitely. I'm Asian. Asian girls are being told that you need to shut up. Don't shy to bite. Put your head down and just be the wife, the daughter, the sister that you are meant to be. Mm-hmm. I was married to a narcissist who mm-hmm. told me every single day, no matter what I do, I was never good enough. The gift that I buy him was not expensive enough. The meal that I cook was never tasty enough. Everything that I do was never good enough for him. And that was with me for over 30 years. Oh my. Wow, that was huge. Not until the day I decided I say F off, I'm not going to listen to all that noises anymore. Whatever they think is their belief and their value. They're saying that it's not because they try to make me feel better or trying to put me into anything. All they're showing is their own insecurity. Mm -hmm. So why am I letting their insecurity affecting me? I say, no, enough is enough. Your insecurity, put it back into your bag and I will live my life the way that I want it, that I deserve it. Mm -hmm. This, I have to give a lot of credit to my Cowan partner. Because he makes me feel like that I am invincible and I can do anything. And he celebrates me for who I am. Yes, I do have my temper as well. And he just be very, very patient with me and, and teach me using his patience that I don't have to go aggressive. I don't have to go insecure because he is there to show me a different way of doing things. And from that, I learned to share with other people what they can do in a certain situation, what they can do to make sure that their insecurity, all those past history, all those painful words that they've been told before in their life Mm -hmm. does not mean who they are today. Knowing that, that we have control back into our head. It is a belief is made up from three different elements. Uh, What we've been told before, what we have experienced and what we see other people do or think. And that affects that our current belief. And we always hear that word that, oh, like, you know, it is your limiting belief. It is your block and things like that. It is true. And the only ones to who have a key to open that door and to let you escape from the trap is yourself. And learning how to do that is what uh, I do, what a coach does to help you to shine the light inside of you, to let you know that why you can be getting out of the gate and why you're the one that will always hold that key to get out. And that's why I love coaching. I love what I'm doing because 
as a makeup artist, I used to be able to solve people's problem. You got small eyes, no problem. I draw a free size bigger. You don't like your hair that way, no problem. I put it into another way to make you feel confident. It's all surface topical. But as a coach right now, I help people to realize, hey, you know what? It's okay to have smaller eyes because that's the unique feature. That is what makes me me. It's okay to speak not clearly. It's okay to have English as your second language. It's okay to have your little bit of accent, to have your little bit of spice that shows the unique you because no one else is like you. Mm-hmm. All those labels that you've been told, it won't stick onto you if you don't allow it. You're in control and you have all the power you need. Yes, exactly. Um, what your story just kind of just like reminds me so much of um, in the Latino culture, it was kind of like a little bit of the opposite. Like as girls, um, I guess I wasn't raised in a traditional way, which um, I'm Mexican and African-American. So our cultures were clashed in regards to the different types of traditional ways of raising your children. But we were taught to, in the um, Black culture, you don't look your elders in the eye. But for Hispanic culture, you have to look them in the eye because if you don't look at them in the eye, you are identified as being disrespectful the same way the other way around. So it all depends. I was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? So I had that as well. But I was raised as a tomboy and um, as an only child. So I didn't have the understanding of what a girl's supposed to act like, what, you know... I was just free range in a sense. I was a latchkey kid and the things that an adult should be doing, I was doing at 10, 11, 12 years old. And unfortunately, there was a lot of other opportunities of not understanding about sexuality and boundaries and understanding, you know, how am I supposed to go on becoming who I am to feel more confident. I didn't have that. So I had to learn everything out on my own. Using one word, how would you describe your family? Close. We're close. I think that uh, we're always going to be having our our differences with families, but they are still close to you. You don't have to see them all the time. You don't, it doesn't mean that you don't care about them. And that closeness It's what I feel like that, I think it comes from confidence as well, because I'm confident with the bond that we have. I don't need to see them all the time. Like my partner, he's a Navy. So he's been out in the sea for about two and a half months Mm -hmm. and he won't come back until another two months later. And I'm still okay with it. And that comes from confidence and not being insecure and I, I do understand like your parents is military so you know that you you need to travel a lot there's a lot of a long time and it shaped up to be a, a certain way because I was bullied at a very young age so I was very used to being independent as well mm-hmm. so it doesn't trouble me and I love him when he's here I love to glue on to him 24 7 but when he's not here I'm completely okay as well And I think that that does come from having the confidence and believing in the people around you. Because once you have that, you build up that connection of closeness. And that's the one word that I would choose to be, to express my family is Mm -hmm. that we're close. I haven't seen my parents for about three months now. We've been in lockdown for so long, Uh, but we did Zoom. We did Zoom and say hi to each other. and with my brothers and sisters, but my brother and sister-in-law as well. I love them dearly. And then I normally arrange a family holiday every single year to get all of us out. And it is always a nice thing to realize that, hey, you know what? Our circumstances may not allow us to see each other or be in close contact, but it doesn't mean that closeness is going to be disappear. A lot of family have their members overseas as well. Um, But it doesn't mean that they don't care for them or doesn't love them. And realizing that closeness is the bond that it will never be broken. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite important to me when I'm looking at family. That's beautiful. Beautiful. It's so hard to have around this time. It's just a very hard time. But like in the beginning of the podcast, you said 
even though with this going on, a lot of people have started taking self-awareness reflection Mm -hmm. on their beauty and their confidence about not having to follow fake people on Instagram and, Mm -hmm. and all of that. And it makes, it's so interesting how we literally have to shut down the world on the things that we've had, like part of our lives as a luxury to take a step back and look at ourselves and say, wait a minute, you know, like the wool has been lifted from our eyes and now we have this reality in front of us. So it's such a, the closeness of your family involved with all of this going on, that makes it a much stronger bond for you. What a living person other than a family member do you most admire? Wow, that's actually a hard question because I'm actually quite close netted. <laughs> I I actually don't look at other people and say, "Oh, I admire them" or something like that. I just say, "Great, that's a good inspiration," and then I'll just follow it my way. I'm always been a webble that I don't have a particular person that I really look up to. I look up to my partner because he's very intelligent. I'm more attracted by Trey, like uh, Michelle Obama. She's a very intelligent and polite woman. Uh, Kate Middleton, they like she's intelligent, kind. I'm attracted by intelligence more than a particular person, the way they look, the way they dress or something like that. I think that's the, the difference that's about me is I look at the good things and the beauty deep from inside so I can actually mimic it, follow it and do it my way as well. Because there's no point from just looking at someone and say, oh my God, they're really good. And then you start comparing yourself and then hoping that one day you will get there. Uh, I was talking about the difference between dream and manifest. A lot of people mistaken oh say like, like if you keep dreaming it will become true it will become true it is true because you first need to put that message to the universe first and say hey i want this i want something it's like when i was um trying to uh, recover from my traumatic marriage that i have and i was went on online dating and it took me about a year and a half to find my current partner And during that time, I always say to the universe that I want someone who's more intelligent than me. I want someone that who can look after themselves, uh, like, you know, it would be great if he can look after me and he care for me and loving me and all of this checklist. And there will be a lot of failures. There will be a lot of scammers and things like that. And I even Mm -hmm. been told by my friends and say, wow, I don't know how you do it. (laughs) You just like, you know, you have so many different prospects outside. I'm not, and, and then I'm, I'm like, like, oh, I'll be so tired if I were you. And I'm like, okay, my ultimate goal is to find a loving, intelligent partner that I can spend the rest of my life with. So if I don't put that out there, what am I going to do? It's like, I wanted to go and live in the lottery, but I don't go and buy the ticket and just mm-hmm. sitting there and hope for that to happen. That will never happen. <laughs> right. I'm first. Exactly. A manifest is that you have a dream that you wanted to go to. You are at current level is, for example, you are a ball, like a 10. And on your right hand side, there's another big ball that sets a hundred. That's where you wanted to go into. You must manifest to see what that dream is. Then find out how to build that bridge into achieving it. What material is that bridge look like? How is that constructed? What do you need? Because logic cuts emotion. As soon as that you go into an emotional state, start giving yourself proof of, okay, what do I need? Every time that I hear that, oh my God, like, you know, I can't believe that you're still trying. It hurts. It hurts. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, if I don't try, then I will never win that lottery. It's simple as that. And that logic alone has pulled me through all the crying. It has pulled me through all the loneliness and the emptiness and feeling not supported. And it's like, no, because I'm smarter, because I'm smarter than that. I look at how I'm going to build that bridge to get the person that I want. And I did at the end, it took me a while, but I did find my ideal partner. Not saying that he's perfect because I'm imperfect as well, but he is the ideal person that I'm willing to work with. 
who we inspire each other. And that is the best relationship that you can ask for. We challenge each other. We inspire each other. We support each other. We understand each other and we communicate. That's a huge deal. A lot of women, even I think the before me, I was too scared to say what I want, too scared to say what I think, too scared to share a faith that he'll, he'll be gone if I say a certain thing in a certain way. You invested so much on a relationship and you just don't want them to leave you. I was that person in a previous relationship and that was painful. I feel mm -hmm. like I was working on eggshell every single day and it was painful to do that. So I said, you know what? His feeling is important, but my feelings is important too. So I developed a sense of, I respectfully voice out what I want, what I think and what I see. And he and give him the space, give him the respect to think about what he's doing as well. For someone who truly cares and love you, he don't want to upset you. The ones that who wants to upset you and put you down is their insecurity and their need, ego to be filled. The person who really truly deserve to be next to you because you are amazing, they will actually listen and learn from each other. And that's what a beautiful relationship is about. And when we talk about inspiration, and I think that's the thing that inspires me. Someone that who constantly will know that there's room for improvement. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I believe in human life. That is so beautiful. Yes. Um, a lot of the things that you have mentioned in your previous marriage it hits me. <laughs> it just, yeah, I'm getting a little emotional, but yeah, everything that you were identifying were just exactly all the things that I had gone through. I am still working on that. Uh, even though I, I was in a marriage with him for maybe six years, but even before that marriage, I was already conditioned to believe that I would never be anything and that everything that was to be my my goal and my path was instructed by someone else's thoughts, how they thought I should be. And I accepted it. It's almost like it was considered a norm. And I fell into that constant cycle, even through the marriage. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, did you have any additional, like in closing? Uh, I just wanted to share this message that we don't need to be perfect to be confident. Don't look at uh, someone like me and say, oh, I will never be like her. You can and you will as long as that you're willing to do it. There's three things that we work on to achieve the goals that we want. Our belief, our want, and the how-to. So you never need to be get stuck as long as you are clear about these three points. And always reach out and ask for help. I didn't know I could ask for help. I treat myself as a failure. I treat myself as being ashamed of going through what I've been through. I treat myself as someone that's not worthy. And always remember, when you treat yourself as worthy, other people will start treat you as worthy. Mm -hmm. So don't say in silence. And my mission is to have no woman to suffer in silence anymore. So reach out if you need any support. I'm not here to sell you anything. I just don't want to see another woman who went through what I went through, who needs to stay in silence for over 30 years. There's the long way and there's the express way. You are in control of choosing that way. Yes, I love your, your whole mission statement overall. I love that no woman should suffer in silence and it really needs to get out there. And I'm so glad to have you as my guest because we're going to be working together and, and I want to get this across the world. We are arm in arm and we, we do not have to have any woman suffer any longer. And I am so glad to have you. It's been an honor so much. Now, can you tell the listeners how they can reach you if they're wanting to get to know more information about you? Feel free to search the word super confident coach or my name is Martha Mock. You'll be able to find my information on Google. I'll provide my links into the show notes for uh, Jasmine as well. 
And also, I wanted to give you a gift. I'm going to give you guys uh, one of the books that I have written. During the time of my grief, it was def- dedicated to my cat of how I get out of my grief and get out of that victim mentality to stop procrastination and start taking action. So the book is called Action is Proof. I'm going to share the link to with Jasmine mm-hmm. and to share with you all and let you guys know that you can also make that three millimeter shift every single day to get out of the state that you're in right now. That is awesome. I am excited to have all this additional information. I will definitely put this in the show notes. So thank you again, Martha. It's been an honor. You have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Yes, you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to Noise Paloo Zion podcast. I'm Jasmine Castillo, also known as DJ Jim Jam. If you are wanting to be promoted on my podcast, please reach out to me if you are a small business, entrepreneur, musician, or artist. www.jasminecastillovoice.com Stay tuned for the next upcoming episode.